animal science is the ultra-generic term used to describe the study and management of domestic livestock. Unlike much of wildlife biology, animal science allows for the complete and utter comprehension of every aspect of a given domestic species. As such, there are countless horrors that have appeared in our domestic animals that better fit into some eldritch fantasy. One of these are enteroliths. Let's take a gander and see what these odd stone-like things are and how they form. I've discussed amorphous globosis in livestock animals, cyclopia in sharks, and the completely normal but no less bizarre fairy slippers of newborn hoofed mammals. Now we must get to a super unique and interesting thing that rarely affects mostly horses, but some other livestock animals, and even more rarely, humans. Enteroliths Enterolith is Latin for intestine stone, because that is basically exactly what it is. More specifically, an enterolith is a stony concretion that forms somewhere in the gastrointestinal cavity. A stone formed within the body is often also referred to as a calculus, which I guess is more of a medical term. A calculus can form just about anywhere, in an organ throughout the body, and in any living thing. Enteroliths are most commonly found in horses, but since it's a term referring to any intestinal stone, it can be applied to the same thing in the intestines of any animal. Reports have been taken of enteroliths in the insides of cows, camels, and even humans. These things likely form in a similar way in all animals, but since they are most commonly reported in horses, let's look at how they form in the skittish finger-walking weirdos. An enterolith begins when something hard gets slurped up by a horse. The object can be just about anything, so long as it's inedible, impassable, and hard or sharp. This object is often a pebble, grain of sand, hard grains, metal pieces, twine balls, or, you know, basically anything else. Since most wild animals don't have or get enteroliths, you would be right in assuming most animals are able to pass many of the hard, indigestible things they swallow. They just harmlessly come out in the droppings. However, under a series of unfortunate events, these things can get caught by the colon and lodged in place. Thanks to the petrographic and geochemical research of Diana Hassel, Peter Schiffman, and Jack Snyder, it's pretty much confirmed that these impassable nuclei then get attacked by the body. The body starts covering the object in layers of the mineral struvite, which is a mix of magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur, sodium, calcium, and potassium, depending on the minerals present in the body and diet. As time passes, the nuclei snowballs into a bigger and bigger rounded stone concretion until it becomes uncomfortable to the animal. In horses, one cannot really easily tell that a horse has an enterolith since there aren't really any symptoms. Farmers and animal scientists find these things in pastures and poo piles because eventually the animal will pass the stone. It gets big enough to be manually moved through the rest of the digestive tract and plops on out. That's basically the evolutionary reason for their existence. Pretty much exactly like pearls, the animal gets something inside it that it cannot process, so the body has to come in and cover the thing in material so that it doesn't cause any more pain, and then makes the object big enough to be pushed out of the body as soon as possible. Enteroliths are also found during necropsies, or when doing surgeries for colic. Colic is basically just abdomen pain in horses and can be caused by many things. However, enteroliths cause colic when they are moved down the digestive tract to a part that is too small for the size of the stone. To alleviate this, vets cut on in there and take the stone out, hence why they are found during these procedures. But they are not the only cause for the colic, so they are not always found during these procedures. There are even some breeds of horse more prone to this sort of stone-oriented colic. Thanks to the variable nature of stone formation, enteroliths can be all sorts of shapes, sizes, and colors. The largest can reach the size of basketballs, though most are tiny gumball-sized things that exit the animal harmlessly in the manure. 
round enteroliths usually form because they are the only ones in the digestive tract. When more than one form, they rub against each other and start forming into pyramidal shapes. Enteroliths have been documented in all sorts of horses, but also in zebras. In 1975, a zebra died in a Wisconsin zoo and a necropsy found an enterolith that had caused obstruction and rupture of the small colon. Then in 1994, two zebras from a California zoo were admitted to a teaching hospital with cases of colic. Once under surgery, the vets found enteroliths. These instances proved that even these ornery, untamed horses can be cured of colic like any other horse. However, horses aren't the only animals that can get these stones. Human cases of enterolithiasis are extremely rare. I'm willing to bet that's because we are sapient enough and dexterous enough to avoid swallowing things that would turn into an enterolith to begin with. However, exceptions happen and they form sometimes. In humans, enteroliths form within a diverticulum, which is just an outpouching of a sac in the body. So like pretty much any organ? though the digestive tract in the case of enteroliths. Apparently, human enteroliths largely have the same chemical composition as the horse ones do, and when they do occur, they often come with some major medical complications requiring x-rays and surgeries as soon as possible. So yeah, that's about it for enteroliths, just another medical marvel in the world of animal science. As with fairy fingers, I bet these things have been plaguing the guts of animals for millions of years. So someone should get on making art of a Paraceratherium's largest recorded enterolith in history. Hell, since they are composed of minerals, it would be totally possible for a Paraceratherium to pass one or die with a huge one in its gut and for it to fossilize. Maybe someday a paleontologist will uncover history's largest recorded enterolith. In researching enteroliths, my paleontologic hunch has paid true. Some have already been found. The oldest known enterolith comes from Upper Jurassic aged Kimmeridge clay formation sediments in the UK. Paleontologist Nigel Larkin and friends published this find in a 2013 issue of Proceedings of the Geologists Association. This specimen is a suboval nodular structure that is 8 centimeters in diameter at its widest. Once sliced open, the research team found the telltale patterns, crystals, and minerals seen in enteroliths. Thanks to the marine nature of the rock it was found in, the author team suggests the best identity of the one who dropped it was a large marine reptile. But it could technically come from just about anything. This proves that enteroliths can form in any animal, mammal, reptile, or amphibian. Most other ancient enteroliths are known from prehistoric Egyptian mummies or archaeological sites. 1972 saw the re-identification of an enterolith specimen from a giant ground sloth site from quaternary-aged sediments of Olivera, Buenos Aires, Argentina. This enterolith was 2.4 inches in diameter and 3.4 inches long. It, along with a handful of round fossil specimens from Uruguay, originally identified as eggshells, were reanalyzed in 2022 by Andres Rinderknecht and Washington Jones. They found the eggshells to share too many traits of enteroliths and re-identified them. Other internal body stones from the fossil record have been reported, but they are not enteroliths, having come from different organs in the body. Well, still on the lookout for the world's all-time largest enterolith. Keep your eyes peeled for suspiciously round stones. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.